Good afternoon, everyone. It is now time to start the TCFD Summit 2021. To start the summit, Mr. Kishimoto Michihiro, Deputy Director General for Industrial Science, Technology, and Environmental Policy, Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry, will read a welcome message on behalf of Mr. Hagiuda Koichi, Minister of Economy, Trade, and Industry. Thank you very much. My name is Kishimoto Michihiro. At the beginning of the TCFD Summit 2021, I would like to read the uh, message uh, from the uh, Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry, Hagiuda Koichi. Since he was appointed uh, recently to this position, uh, he is not able to attend this meeting. So I would like to read his message. Good afternoon, everyone. On October the 4th, I was appointed as a Minister of Economy, Trade and Industry in the Kishida Cabinet. My name is Hagiuda Koichi. I was not able to attend the meeting as I have just took the office, but I would like to share a few words with you. First of all, I am very happy that the third TCFD Summit is held as a part of Tokyo Beyond Zero Week. As you know, Japan has declared its goal of becoming carbon neutral by 2050, and we will take up the challenge to achieve this goal and further contribute to global carbon neutrality activities. In the challenge to become carbon neutral, it is important for each country to pursue a variety of paths according to its own situation rather than the one-size-fits-all approach. In order to expand the options for these various passes, it is necessary to create innovation through research and development. It is also necessary to spread this innovation to the world. And today's TCFD summit is a very significant and important event for us to explore these ideas. The number of international conferences held during the Tokyo Beyond Zero Week has increased from six last year to eight this year, which is an indication of Japan's serious commitment toward carbon neutrality. A large number of people from all over the world with various backgrounds gather to exchange information and discuss efforts to achieve decarbonization. It is my strong hope that Tokyo will lead the commitment that would lead in this field, especially for this conference, we have support from the top leaders of the private sector and also academia. So we have the most number of the TCADF supporters and uh, as a government, we will contribute uh, to these activities and then take a lead in contributing to these activities. I will continue to work with you to achieve this goal of carbon neutrality. I'd like to thank you for all your great contribution today and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Also, sincerely hope that today's meeting will produce significant results. Thank you very much. October the 5th, 2021. Affairs at Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry we also give it a welcome message. Good afternoon. I'm Hirose Naoshi, Vice Minister for International Affairs, Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry. At the opening of TCFD Summit 2021, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all the speakers from all over the world who are participating in this event, despite the time difference. This week, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry is hosting Tokyo Beyond Zero Week 2021, a 
a series of international conferences on energy and the environment, continuing on from last year. In October last year, Japan announced its goal of achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. And this April, Japan announced that it would reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 46% in fiscal year 2030. This is a target which is aligned with the long-term goal of net zero by 2050 while continuing strenuous efforts in its challenge to meet the lofty goal of cutting emissions by 50%. In order to realize these goals, METI has been accelerating policy initiatives in the energy and environmental fields and has been developing discussions in each field at various international conferences. With the momentum that this enthusiasm has created, the third GCFD summit aims to promote constructive dialogue between investors and companies through disclosures related to climate change and to facilitate the use of finance in its most effective role, which is to support companies in working to solve climate change issues. In the past year, over 1,000 institutions around the world have newly supported the GCFD bringing the total number of such institutions to more than 2,400 worldwide. With a rising interest in the TCFD, we are very pleased to be hosting the TCFD Summit 2021 online today. As the host, we are also pleased about making further progress on climate change countermeasures in cooperation with industry and financial leaders from around the world. At last year's summit, there was a shared recognition that transitions toward decarbonization and low carbonization, as well as disruptive innovations aimed at significantly reducing CO2 emissions, should not be viewed as costs, but rather as opportunities, and that it is important to utilize the TCFD to disclosures for such purpose. Synergetic interaction between corporate strategy and TCFD disclosures are being discussed, including the usefulness of disclosing transition plans as stated in the proposed guidance of TCFD. In addition, there is a movement to mandate TCFD disclosures as a framework for climate change-related information disclosure. Furthermore, there is a need to improve the quality of disclosures in order to make full use of climate change-related analysis in investment and financing decisions. This year's summit will confirm such progress and deepen the discussions. In Japan, over 500 institutions already support the TCFD, which is the largest of such numbers in the world. With the revision of Japan's corporate governance code for the Tokyo Stock Exchange, prime market listed companies will be required to enhance the quality and quantity of disclosures based on the TCFD or an equivalent framework from April next year. In addition, in order to achieve carbon neutrality, it is important to have a virtuous cycle between the economy and the environment through corporate initiatives and disclosures, investor evaluations, and engagement. The basic guideline on climate transition finance was formulated in May this year, which is consistent with the Climate Transition Finance Handbook of the International Capital Market Association. Furthermore, MIDI is advancing the formulation of roadmaps for sectors with high CO2 emissions, such as materials and energy. In addition, as financial support for groundbreaking innovation, we have updated and expanded the list of companies that are positioned as zero emission challenge companies, which are vocally advancing innovation initiatives towards realizing a decarbonized society. We are pleased that the number of such companies has increased by over 80% from the list introduced at last year's summit, and the company's innovation efforts are expanding. Furthermore, METI is considering the creation of a carbon credit market that will contribute to global carbon reduction as carbon pricing for growth. In conjunction with the move to strengthen the functions of the green international finance sector, we will make maximum use of the power of the market, including ESG funds, and work ambitiously to accelerate global decarbonization. Disclosure is a foundation for evaluating such initiatives. We are confident that this summit will contribute to the advancement of constructive discussions. 
Mackey will continue to support the promotion of TCFT disclosures. In order to achieve global carbon neutrality, Japan will lead the world's decarbonization by aiming to establish innovative technologies to realize beyond zero and implement them within our society. Furthermore, uh, through this provision of funding, we aim to create a wave of financing which will accelerate corporate efforts to achieve carbon neutrality. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Hirose. Now we would like to move on to opening remarks. First, Mr. Valdis Dombrovskis, Executive Vice President of the European Commission, will give an opening remark. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me to speak at the third summit of the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures. I regret not being able to be with you in person in Japan today. I would like to pay tribute to the work of the Japanese authorities, particularly the Ministry on Economy, Trade and Industry in organizing this important event. The European Union remains firmly committed to becoming a sustainable economy by, by supporting green jobs, green growth and green investments in our planned move to climate neutrality. For that transition to happen, we rely on adequate finance from the private sector. First, investors interested in financial products and services that can help to fight against climate change need information so that they can identify investments with a positive climate impact. Most importantly, they need the right information to avoid greenwashing. Here, the TCFD recommendations are an important reference point. The European Commission remains a strong supporter of the TCFD. Your work provides authoritative guidance for companies on how to report climate information. And it has been particularly important for the EU's own rules on disclosures. This began with our 2019 guidelines on how companies should report climate information. These guidelines explicitly incorporate the TCFD recommendations. We followed this up in April 2021 by proposing a new Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive. This takes a comprehensive approach on sustainability reporting and increases its transparency. It covers many environmental and social issues, not just climate, such as human rights, equal opportunities and working conditions. And it envisages mandatory EU standards. Our legal proposal incorporates the key elements of the TCFD recommendations, as do the accompanying standards. This reflects our support for the G7 commitment to make the TCFD recommendations mandatory. With sustainability reporting standards, we should build on what already exists and aim for as much global alignment as possible. The European Commission has asked the European Financial Reporting Advisory Group, EFRAG, to start technical work on future sustainability reporting standards. It is uh, very important that EFRAG holds uh, technical discussions with those developing the most important global initiatives, including the International Financial Reporting Standards Foundation and the Global Reporting Initiative. Here, I believe that the work being done by the TCFD can play a positive role in this global alignment. It provides common ground for different international initiatives for setting standards. Uh, in Europe, we have gone a long way on sustainable finance since the first TCFD summit was held in Tokyo in 2019. Our taxonomy classification system, work on corporate disclosures, a proposed green bond standards, uh, to name just a few advances. Uh, not to mention the International Platform on Sustainable Finance, whose membership only keeps expanding. I think that the EU and Japan can do even more to cooperate in this area. We are now working on the organization of a high-level economic dialogue in the near future, which should cover these and other important topics. We can also use our economic partnership agreement, which has proven so successful to date, to drive climate uh, transition. 
This could include working more closely together on green energy and green public procurement, for example. Let me conclude by thanking you for the opportunity to contribute to this summit. We greatly value the pioneering work of the TCFD and look forward to continuing our close cooperation in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mr. Mark Carney, Final Advisor to the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom for COP26 and the UN Special Envoy for Climate Action and Finance, will also give an opening remark. It is an honor to participate in Japan's 2021 TCFD Summit. Since I joined last year's summit, Japan's international leadership on the path to decarbonization has continued to grow. Last year, Prime Minister Suga announced that Japan's ambition to reduce carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. And since then, the Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry under the leadership of Minister Kajiyama has developed and refined its green growth strategy in order to holistically direct public policy towards achieving that 2050 target. This strategy, underpinned by a commitment to boosting investment in renewable energy and hydrogen fuel and carbon recycling, marks a turning point in Japan's pathway towards a sustainable economy. In this regard, the private financial system will play a critical role in intensifying the impact of these initiatives by shifting capital away from those who are lagging the transition and towards those who are leading the transition to net zero. Climate-related financial reporting is foundational for this process because what gets measured gets managed. With COP26 just weeks away, we've been working to ensure that the financial sector has the information, the tools, and the markets so that every decision takes climate change into account. At its core, this means comprehensive climate reporting that helps build a transformation in climate risk management and the mainstreaming of returns taking into account climate change. It also means creating new markets to mobilize capital at scale to emerging and developing economies. The focus of today's event, of course, is on reporting, the core, the foundation of this system. For COP26, we're calling on all major jurisdictions to adopt pathways to make TCFD disclosure mandatory, including by supporting the IFRS's foundation's work to develop a global baseline sustainability reporting standard, starting with and based on the TCFD. Once again, Japan is a leader in responding to this call. The JFSA has announced its plans to revise its corporate governance code to require TCFD disclosure for listed companies. And Japan, alongside of the rest of the G7, has committed to moving to mandatory disclosures in June at the G7 summit. Japanese companies are already leading the world in responding to this need. As you know, Japan has more TCFD supporters, 475 and counting, more supporters than in any other jurisdiction, and represent almost 20% of TCFD supporters worldwide. And according to the latest meeting TCFD consortium member survey, TCFD disclosure among your membership has increased rapidly since 2019, uh, almost tenfold over that period. As part of our efforts to improve reporting, we want financial institutions to disclose how well their portfolios are aligned with the net zero transition. This is critical information. So we're working to develop more consistent and robust metrics to measure that alignment. The TCFD recently undertook a consultation which demonstrated investor demand for these metrics. And the portfolio alignment team led by David Blood is producing a technical report on the construction of those metrics. That report will be published next month and should drive the use of more consistent, robust, and decision useful metrics in Japan and worldwide. Japan continues to be a leader and an international inspiration on TCFD implementation. 
and through the tireless work of Nidhi, the JFSA, and others, to embedding the TCFD into binding disclosure requirements. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for this leadership. It's helping the world, it's helping to create a world in which every decision takes climate change into account. By doing so, you're not just helping Japanese financial institutions manage risk, you're helping your businesses seize the opportunities in the net zero transition, and you're helping by your example and your energy and your actions, helping all of us to build a more sustainable world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Ms. Mary Shapiro, head of the TCFD Secretariat and Vice Chair for Global Public Policy at Bloomberg and Senior Advisor to the Founder will give an opening remark. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to join you and represent the TCFD for the third annual TCFD Summit. Thank you to Mehdi for once again hosting this terrific event, though I'm sorry that we can't all be together. Since 2019, when the world's first TCFD summit was held in Tokyo, the work of the TCFD consortium has been hugely important to the growing global support and implementation of the TCFD recommendations. And these subsequent gatherings have proven to be critical touch points on Japan's journey to further TCFD adoption. Today, Japan continues to lead in terms of overall TCFD support with 484 supporting organizations, including most recently, the Bank of Japan. This represents nearly 20% of all TCFD supporters. In fact, the TCFD consortium's efforts have been so noteworthy that other task force members are considering how to replicate the model in their local markets most recently in Mexico. The theme of this year's summit, Transition, is highly relevant to the TCFD's current work. As governments increasingly acknowledge the risks of climate change and develop action plans, it has become clear that the private sector must follow to accelerate the transition to a low carbon and climate resilient economy. The TCFD has proven to be an effective disclosure framework for governments and policymakers as they chart their paths to net zero. This summer, the TCFD completed a public consultation on metrics, targets, and transition planning that will yield guidance to help organizations in defining and disclosing transition plans. To that end, we were encouraged to see the Japan Financial Services Agency METI and the Minister of the Environment worked together to release its basic guidelines on climate transition finance following METI's policy of climate innovation strategy in 2020. The document suggests organizations disclose transition strategies in line with frameworks like the TCFD and more updated transition finance policies will be shared by METI during this summit. And Japan's corporate governance code has been revised by the Japan Exchange Group to enhance the quality and quantity of climate-related disclosure based on the TCFD recommendations or equivalent international frameworks for listed companies. Since we last met, not only has support for the TCFD grown enormously with nearly 2,500 supporters across 88 countries, but I believe we've reached a point of inevitability in the embrace of climate risk disclosure as mandatory by jurisdictions around the world. In June, the G7 finance ministers and central bank governors released a communique supporting mandatory climate-related financial disclosures based on the TCFD recommendations. Shortly thereafter, the G20 committed to promoting implementation of climate-related disclosure requirements building on the TCFD framework. Also critical to the TCFD's mission is the work that is currently underway by global standard setters like the IFRS, the European Commission, and others to establish a global standard 
for climate and broader sustainability reporting. Across the board, the TCFD is being referenced as the foundation for these standards, acting as a common thread to tie together this work across regions. If you read the recent International Panel on Climate Change report, you will know this progress is more critical now than ever before. If we are to avoid the most catastrophic consequences of global warming, we need transformational change, and we have no time to waste. Thank you again to METI and the TCFD Consortium for all your tireless work in Japan to cement climate disclosure in the fabric of financial decision making. Please enjoy the summit. Thank you. Next, Mr. Kuroda Haruhiko, Governor of the Bank of Japan, will give an opening remark. It gives me great to have this opportunity to speak to you at the TCFD Summit 2021. Climate change is a global challenge and could have a broad impact on our society and economic activity into the future. The promotion of climate-related disclosure, which is on the agenda of this summit, is one of the key elements for society and the economy to make progress in addressing climate change. For instance, promoting disclosure will enable investors to accurately identify climate-related risks and make investment. Increased disclosure will also result in more proactive production activity and research and development by firms in response to climate change. It is therefore important for each entity to enhance both the quality and quantity of their disclosures based, for example, on the recommendation of the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosure, or TCFD, and to make appropriate use of the information disclosed. The Bank of Japan decided upon its comprehensive strategy this July with the intention of furthering its efforts on climate change, consistent with the bank's mandate of achieving climate stability and ensuring the stability of the financial system. In this context, I would like to today to touch on three areas of climate-related disclosure. The first area is monetary policy. From a central bank standpoint, supporting the private sector's efforts on climate change will help stabilize the macroeconomy in the long run. From this perspective, the bank has decided to introduce a new fund supplying operation whereby financial institutions can receive funds from the bank against their investment or loans made as part of their effort to address climate change. Under the new operation, the bank will require financial institutions to disclose a certain level of information, including that based on the TCFD recommendations, while leaving the decision as to which investment and loans contribute to addressing climate change to the direct discretion of the financial institution themselves. In this way, disclosures based on the TCFD recommendations will play an important role in the bank's new operation in the form of market discipline to encourage investment and loans that make a genuine contribution to addressing climate change. The second area concerns the financial system. The bank will actively support financial institutions in identifying and managing their climate-related financial risks with a view to maintaining the stability of the financial system and the smooth functioning of financial intermediation. To this end, through on-site examinations and off-site monitoring, 
the bank will encourage financial institutions to enhance their disclosures based on the PCFD and other recommendations. The third area relates to the bank's own operations. The bank, as a business entity, continues to pay due consideration to climate change in undertaking its business operations by, for example, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and saving energy. To communicate these efforts clearly, the bank will make disclosures, taking into account the PCFD recommendations and enhance its communication with the public on climate-related conduct in general. The bank will follow appropriately the evolving nature of climate-related issues, exchange dialogue with domestic and foreign stakeholders, and will constantly review its measures and make adjustments where needed. Today's summit brings together world leaders on the cutting edge of efforts to address climate change. I hope that participants will have a fruitful discussion on the enhancement of disclosure and on other related topics. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Next, Mr. Peter Bakker, President and CEO of WBCSD, will give an opening remark. Hello, my name is Peter Bakker, and I'm the President and CEO of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, or WBCSD for short. It is an honor to address the third edition of the TCFD Summit today. Thank you for joining us, and thank you to the Japanese Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry and the TCFD Consortium for our long-standing partnership in convening this successful event since the first edition back in 2019. In the context of the continued challenges and systemic risks as accentuated by the ongoing pandemic, this year's TCFD Summit is a critical and much-needed milestone and an important stop on the road to the UN Climate Change Conference COP26 next month. We have a unique window of opportunity to realize the shared vision of nine plus billion people to live well within planetary boundaries by mid-century. To achieve this vision as outlined in WBCSD's Vision 2050 Time to Transform report, leaders everywhere need to change their mindsets toward building long-term resilience, toward a regenerative approach to business, and ultimately toward reinventing capitalism. This shift will ensure that the economic systems, our incentives, the global accounting standards, and the capital market valuations will no longer just be based on the financial performance of business, but integrates the impact on the planet and people as part of how we define success and determine the enterprise value. The TCFD recommendations are an important framework in this context. They provide a common language by which companies and investors can communicate and manage climate-related risks and opportunities. And they provide a basis for standard setters, regulators to develop clear guidance on the specification, consistency, and comparability of decision-useful information and communication. TCFD supports and implement has seen significant progress over the past year. Since 2020, TCFD has secured over 1,000 additional supporters worldwide, including a historic endorsement by the G7 in 2021. We've seen a shift towards compulsory climate reporting, either following or in line with TCFD recommendations by a number of governments, as well as supervisory and security organizations. Today, nearly 500 Japanese organizations support TCFD, illustrating the leadership of Japanese businesses, investors, and government committed to decarbonization and transparency. 
the same time, there is much to be done to leverage this momentum in scaling up high quality, comparable and reliable assessment and disclosure on climate related risks, impacts, opportunities and transition plans. That is why at WBCSD, we have been working with leading companies to support COP26 private finance priority related to the challenging issue of scenario analysis, starting with a focus on the energy system and moving into food, agriculture and forest products next year. We believe business can and must lead transformative change. It must play a key role in reimagining performance, evolving accounting, making better decisions and delivering innovations in products and services and business models that generate true value and contribute to a flourishing economy. But we must also strengthen communication and alignment between the business and investment communities to integrate sustainability in corporate and investor relations, into valuations, into incentives, and eventually into capital allocation decisions. Today's TCFD summit will be critical in building a shared understanding of the way forward, which is why I'm inspired in the variety of perspectives and stakeholders represented here today. Your collective knowledge and expertise will be key in unlocking the transformation needed for nine plus billion people to live well within planetary boundaries by 2050. I look forward to today's discussion and to working together with you in bringing these ideas to action. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Professor Ito Kunio, Chair of the TCFD Consortium and Director of Totsubashi CFO Education and Research Center, will give an opening remark. As the Chair of the TCFD Consortium, one of the co-hosts of the event, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to all of you for being able to convene the third TCFD Summit 2021. The momentum for TCFD disclosure is increasing year by year. There are more than 2,400 organizations supporting the initiative worldwide, with more than 500 in Japan, the largest number in the world. Especially last year, about 200 organizations, such as regional financial institutions, have expressed their support, underscoring the expansion to the region. Not only the number of supporters in Japan, but also the quality of disclosure is steadily improving. Approximately 70% of the members of the TCFD consortium are known financial companies, and there is a trend being established for companies to voluntarily take proactive measures to address climate change and disclosure information. This June, the Corporate Governance Code was revised. Next April, there will be a change in the market segmentation of the Tokyo Stock Exchange. TCFD-based disclosure will become de facto mandatory for companies listed in the prime market. In this mega trend, activities of the TCFD consortium has significantly progressed, working in collaboration with the financial, business, and government sectors. For example, the first, revision of the green investment guidance. Second, providing more opportunity to dialogue between financial, business, and government sectors. And the third, progress in international cooperation. First of all, I'd like to refer to the revision of the Green Investment Guidance. The Green Investment Guidance was released at the first DCFD Summit two years ago. This was put to use by many financial institutions, both domestic and abroad. During the last two years, the circumstances surrounding TCFD has significantly changed, and there is a growing importance and evaluating opportunities, as well as risk through engagement between management and investors. 
Considering these developments, the PCFD Consortium has revised the guidance. It is a great pleasure to release a new guidance today here in the PCFD Summit. Japanese companies have been improving the level of the PCFD disclosures. Nevertheless, in order to achieve carbon neutrality, through transition through continuous efforts to lower carbonization, as well as innovation through substantial technological progress and are essential. Financial institutions are expected to accelerate these trends. In addition, there has been a growing movement among financial institutions to reduce emissions of the investment and loan portfolios. Financial institutions are required not only to select investees and borrowers, but also to encourage them to address climate change. These perspectives are incorporated in the revised guidance to encourage financial institutions to use the information disclosed according to the PCFD recommendations to provide funds to companies that are proactive in tackling climate change. Next, I'd like to talk about the enhancement of the opportunities for dialogue between financial, business, and governmental sectors. PCFD Consortium has been conducting discussing among companies, financial institutions, and government ministries with an objective that companies being proactive about climate change should be evaluated and financed in an appropriate manner. Specifically, we have discussed trends in disclosure of climate-related information and disseminated our position as a consortium, both in Japan and worldwide. We also regularly hold roundtables between companies and financial institutions to discuss the disclosure and use of PCFD recommendation in small group settings. The role of the consortium is becoming more and more important as the number of domestic PCFD supporters have been increasing at an accelerated pace due to the introduction of de facto mandatory disclosure of PCFD in the prime market. We plan to expand the activities of the consortium by setting up opportunities for information sharing and dialogue among stakeholders. These activities are based on mutual cooperation between the government and business sectors rather than a hierarchical relationship. And I can confidently say that this is an initiative unique to Japan, which we can be proud of. Finally, I'd like to talk about the progress in international cooperation. The consortium, which is managed through cooperation by the financial business and government sectors, have played an important role in the development of PCFD in Japan and has attracted international attention. In fact, in Mexico, the Bank of Mexico is taking the lead in considering the establishment of a consortium similar to the Japanese model. The TCLD consortium will continue to contribute to cooperating with various countries to support disclosure. This year's summit will discuss the transition of high emission industries and how scope three emissions should be disclosed in order to further advance PCFD disclosure and promote climate change finance. Disclosure of the transition plan is also recommended in the guidance proposed by TCFD. In Japan, I chair the task force on preparation of the environment for transition finance and issue the basic guidance on transition finance. Through today's discussion, I hope that the company will advance the PCFD disclosures. The financial institutions will appropriately evaluate them, and that the necessary financing will be provided 
to address climate change. Thank you. Thank you. This is the end of a welcome message and the opening remarks. Participants online, please go back to the timeline and join the next session, keynote one and the panel discussion one. We will begin it shortly, so please wait for a while. <laughs>